Can we be very informal? <laughs> because you guys, I feel like uh, I'm like among families. Okay, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah I, 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 feel, I, I feel that I share less than I am amongst people that I know. Alright, so I do know a few places here. Right. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Pastor Albert for having me. Alright, I am just a small chiku <laughs> You know, and he has graciously encouraged me all the time. You know, come share. You know, in my church. Yeah, and it's taken so long for me to actually arrive. Okay, <laughs> I was supposed to be here like three weeks ago, right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, and I thought that ah, oh, okay, my message is gone. <laughs> but uh, I think he 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 gave me uh, another day, which is today, and I felt that um, God wanted me to be here. Okay, I feel my, my heart over that. Yeah. I, have, I have something to deliver to you all. Okay, and uh, I, I feel that this is an assignment for for us as a you know, including myself. Alright. So um, thank you, Pastor Albert. I just want to honor this man. Your pastor is a very good man. But but more importantly, he is God's man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I think uh, this this is very very essential. Yeah, that Pastor, I, I just want you to know that I'm very very grateful that you have been with us in the leadership of Ellis Park for a season. All right, um, you 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 came in at the right time to help us. Your your Pastor is a big man. Okay, <laughs> not, not just a good and godly man, but yeah, he he he's, he's a very capable person, and um, we are we were so blessed actually. All right, to have him as our spiritual advisor for the elders. Okay, I just want you to know the uh, the, the measure of um, maturity and depth. Okay, that he has. All right, as a pastor, you don't know what you have. In your all right, you all know that. Yes. So if you all know that, then, yes. you know, you know that then, then there must be there must be uh, a measure of. Uh, honor, right? Yes. 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 right? Yes. Yeah. So thank you so much. And I also want to say, uh, Pastor Albert, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe this has not been spoken enough to you. Mm-hmm. I just want to say thank you. And as a church, I think we need to thank this guy. Yeah. I know uh, sometimes it has been difficult. It has been difficult. But thank you so much, Pastor Albert. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think if, if for, for them to tell their story that would bless all, all of us, I think it would take uh, perhaps a few camps. Uh. <laughs> Alright, but I really want to add, uh, give you a principle of the kingdom of God that I learned. If you want things from heaven, you must honor the vessel that God uses. Amen. The blessing of flow. I've sat under uh, many spiritual fathers. You know, God has taught me that if you want to draw from a man of God, you need to honor, honor that man. Okay? And how does it translate? Honor means we think well of them, we speak well of them, we support them. Alright? Yeah? It's not easy being a pastor. I, I mean, I admire this man. Alright? He has such depth of humility that uh, I, 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 I mean, <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I'm not glorifying a person. Please don't get me wrong, alright? But I just want to reaffirm you as a church that um, you know, be behind your pastor. Alright? Support him yes. all the way. Because God has things that are not finished in his life. It's not done yet, Pastor Albert. <laughs> don't throw in the towel. Yeah. And for you, uh, yeah, I think uh, there are things in my heart. I, I didn't plan to say some of these things. Yeah, but I just felt that I needed to. Okay. Um, yeah. So I bring you greetings from uh, Fatis Park Baptist Church. All right. I am uh, the least uh, of the four elders in my church. All right. And I always tell people that I'm, I'm an elder in the church because it's by default that my brother-in-law is the senior pastor of the church. <laughs> so he, he has no choice like because this this young brother okay la, make elder, la. 
So I've been blessed, and um, as you know, Pastor has been with us, you know, uh, uh, to be leaders at the campus. His wisdom is just uh, uh, God. Right? Yeah, so. Uh, okay, so today, <laughs> I, I, I still don't know how to start. Huh? Okay, I, I, I have this uh, title in my sermon, and I hope to finish in 45 minutes. Okay? Um, I've got a lot of cover, so maybe I won't cover everything. Yeah, but uh, are you can can be free or not? Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, right from the beginning of the year when your pastor invited me, right? He, he tried to book me like six months, right? Uh, uh, make, make me feel like wow, big time speaker, six months again. Okay? <laughs> so already, actually, I I'm not a, I'm not really a preacher. Right? I preach because I. I'm an elder of the church, all right? So I don't have a lot of preaching engagements in my church, but my area is really, really the area of uh, worship, okay? So, uh, but the Lord has, off and on, you know, kicked me out and say, oh, you better swim a bit, a bit in the area of preaching and, and, and uh, so forth. So I actually had this, this, um, this title, Ring of Change. It's actually the title of uh, a song that I've written, all right? It's not the one that you, then you check on YouTube and then it comes out with change by the scorpions. So you won't find that uh, if you type with of change, uh, you will see scorpions on you know. But if you type uh, with of change, and then, you know, ta, uh, then it will come out. Okay. So uh, before I start uh, to, um, to 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 tell you about this, maybe let's just uh, uh, let's go to God in prayer. Father Lord, I thank you for your presence here. Lord, it means so much to us when you are present in our midst. Because God, you mean everything to us. Father, my prayer for all of us is that uh, after we hear your word today and we respond to you in worship, God, that you will give us uh, a really deep love for you and also for one another. God, I pray, O oh God, that you will do all this uh, in Jesus' name as we glorify uh, the name of Jesus in our midst today. We just commit this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, um, so the wind of change, um, just a little bit of a history. This song is actually uh, a, a, a prophetic song, right? Are you all familiar with the term prophetic song? That means it's a song that is uh, that kind of foretell the future and also it, uh, it declares uh, God's word uh, in a particular season. You know, it's foretelling this stuff. Okay, yeah, and um, the Lord actually gave me this song uh, just before the pandemic struck in 2019, uh, December 2019. Okay, and um, the verse was downloaded just as I was wake, waking up in a one, one morning at the end of December, and I hear the words of the song, and, and something, it did something to my spirit. Okay, but it took me like a couple of years to, just to try to write the verse. Yeah. Um, it was a very, very difficult process. All right? I, I, I'm coming to a point that I want to share with you. It took me so long because I tried to construct it based on my, my what I think it is. You see, uh, that was a mistake. Yeah. It, I could have truncated the process if I had listened to the Lord carefully. So what happened was I actually released this song um, in the midst of uh, the pandemic and it didn't work out, uh, it didn't fly. Okay, and then uh, he was in a meeting by my spiritual father, Pastor Paul Ang. All right, and uh, he he just mentioned two things. He, he mentioned two sets of scriptures: Acts two and Ezekiel thirty-seven. You know, Acts two where the the disciples they were of the upper room, and then Ezekiel thirty-seven where you have the valley of the dry bones. Right at that point, I knew that the two verses had to be based on these two sets of scriptures, but I was very. Uh, I, want, I didn't want to accept it, <laughs> so I struggled. Yeah. So I, I tried again in the dream. I've never worked so hard on a song in my life before. Yeah. But when, when it came towards the time where uh, I felt that God was putting an urgency in my heart to release the song, I went back to the Lord you know, and, and I said, okay, now, let me try and see whether I can base my two verses on X2 and Ezekiel 37. And I tell you, the moment I decided that I would want to do that in my heart, the words just came so easily. I did not have to strive. I did not have to construct it very much from my mind. It just flowed out. Alright, so the lesson is this. 
What is the lesson? What do you think the lesson is? Trust. Listen to the Spirit of the Lord. Yeah? Because when we listen to the Spirit of the Lord, as acceleration begins to take place. Yeah? You take many, we take many, you know, we put in so much effort and then nothing comes out of it. You see? I've got drafts after drafts. You see, finally, when I listen to the Spirit of the Lord, I begin to obey what He wanted me to do. Everything came together. There was a click in my spirit. Alright, and you know that when there's a click in your spirit, when everything just aligns, then you know you know that God is in this song. Okay? Yeah? So let me just define what this wind of change is. Yeah. So if you look here, um, there is a duality in meaning as you sing this song afterwards and you look at the words here. Yeah? Um, number one is actually an English idiom. It is an influence or tendency that cannot be resisted. Dictionary. Forces that have the power to change things, used generally to mean change is going to happen. In the real matter. An event or a series of events that have started to happen and will cause important changes or results. Okay? And in biblical symbolism, in the context of Acts 2 and 37, the wind is symbolic of the Holy Spirit and His work. Okay? And it is a wind of revival, it is a wind of change. When the Holy Spirit comes, He brings godly changes to people, places, and circumstances. All right? So when I talk about the wind of change, uh, I'm not talking of uh, like, uh, please know that I mean the wind of God. All right? yeah? So I will use these terms interchangeably. Um, the wind of God, the wind of change, the wind of revival, uh, and, and um, the wind of the Holy Spirit. They all mean uh, the same body sermon. Okay? Yeah? So um, let me just sing the song, and then I will tell you why uh, this song is significant, and I, uh, I'll tell you later. Okay? So uh, wind of change. Let me drink this, huh? <laughs> okay. If you can, sing with me, lah. Okay. <laughs>
why why is it that I I'm so eager to actually share with you this? Um, I'm going to share with you uh, the things that have actually happened that are associated with the release of the song. Okay, uh, never in my entire life as a Christian have I witnessed uh, something that is quite remarkable. Yeah. So what happened was when this song was sang in one of our prayer groups uh, in church, uh, out of the blue, I, I just felt that uh, I needed to release this song in the realm of the spirit. Okay, sorry, am I talking Greek here? <laughs> no, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So um, through the inspiration of the spirit, I began to sing this song, just the chorus. And um, in the prayer room, suddenly, uh, I, I, I had this impression that the leadership of a particular nation was going to change. All right. Uh, I, I even told that to my elders. And I, I was quite surprised that why is it that I say such a thing? All right. Uh, I'm not into politics or things like that. But this particular nation uh, came to mind. And true enough, after we prayed, and I sensed that um, the week after, uh, there was a change in the leadership. Okay. Uh, so I, I don't know what that is. It's like I think God trying to tell me that this song is prophetic. God is saying something. All right. The second time this thing happened, um, when, when this song was released publicly, um, the, 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 the wind of change uh, became a tagline in one of the major newspapers. Uh, okay. And uh, I was shocked because uh, uh, that wasn't the, 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 the wind of change came because um, as a result of uh, a result of an election okay, of a particular country. <laughs> right? This particular party um, that won isn't the one that I, I desired. Uh, okay? So I began to ask the Lord, I say, why is this like that? You know? I mean, um, not this one yet. Um, why, why is it that I, I began to declare that wind of change? And then why is it that the party that I didn't want to win? <laughs> won the, the elections. And then um, I'm reminded of um, this story in Acts uh, chapter 2 whereby when the disciples in the upper room they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the people actually mocked at them yes. and said they are full of new wine. Okay? So it was a derogatory, uh, the, um, it was a negative statement. Uh, okay? but, um, but there is an element of truth in it. Okay? So what happened was uh, again, just before uh, our, uh, just before uh, our the, the national election of that particular nation, okay, uh, um, I just felt again that to release the song publicly in a meeting of like about five hundred people, okay, um, and uh, I didn't think that my desired party would win, uh, okay, but I by faith I released the song because I believe I believe that God. Confirmation. <laughs> yeah. So it was like a prophetic song that God was trying to release. You know that uh, He's bringing a, a wind of change in the political realm. Okay. And uh, when the elections came, um, the party that uh, that I desire, okay, for the for the victory for victory, won against all odds. Okay. Now, you ask me. Uh, is it coincidental? I don't think so. Lah. I think this song is being used by God to, uh, to prophesy a particular trend that the Holy Spirit is going to bring about. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> this prophetic declaration is not something unbiblical. In fact, if you look at Ezekiel chapter 37, where he talks about the Valley of Dry Bones, God actually asked Ezekiel to prophesy to the wind, prophesy to the dry bones. Okay, and if you look at this, the first the, the chorus of this song is actually a prophetic declaration. All right. Now I'm not saying that it is a silver bullet. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Uh, every prophetic declaration has to be inspired by the Spirit of God, and when you begin to release out of your mouth, great power will be released to change atmospheres. Okay. So uh, I believe that was what happened. All right. As the Lord led me to uh, release this prophetic declaration. Uh, 
<coughs> actually it was quite scary because for a moment I thought that I'm putting my 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 my, my stand on the line. You know, I mean I I I, I would like to have okay, I would like to have a, a, a nice uh, clean prophetic record. <laughs> okay, uh, because I move in the area of prophecy. Uh, a lot, you know, and one of the things that really uh, gives me great joy is when the Lord uses me to bring about uh, a word that, that, that you know, that, that comes to pass. All right, so uh, oh, that really <laughs> saved my face, you know. The Lord really, um, yeah. But all glory to God. So um, when you pray for political events uh, in our nation, uh, may I ask if we could actually declare the wind of God over our land. Okay. Can, we, can we just do that? Because I feel that I'm actually here today to deliver this, this thing, actually. All right. So, but of course, I've been given the privilege to share the message which I have. But I, I feel that this is what I want to come in. Actually, it would have been later, Pastor. But because of the date that he gave me, which is prior our state elections, that's it, I feel it's very pertinent that we, we pray all right. And then we ask for the will of God to be done in our nation. Uh, and we ask that God will bring His wind to blow away evil in our land. All right. Uh, if not for us, for our those who are after us, it's important. All right. I will share later uh, why why is it so important. All right. So um, maybe at this juncture, Pastor, could you uh, maybe lead us in prayer uh, for our coming uh, state elections? Okay. Can we join our hearts? And let's just in your heart just say, God, bring that wind of change. Bring that wind of change. Change everything that is not of you over our land. All right? Yeah, Pastor Ned. Okay, let's, let, let's just put our hearts and spirit together. Uh, this is not just an exercise in the human flesh, but this the uh, calling out of the spirit from within us. Father, you know our heart for Malaysia. You know how much we desire that Malaysia fulfill the purposes in your kingdom, yes. Yes. the will you have for Malaysia. Lord, we remember those days when you spoke about Malaysia and Singapore being two wheels of a bicycle through which the word of God will go out through the ASEAN region, Asia itself, and just missions will reach out and touch many people's lives. But since the time we've seen so much upheaval in our own nation, and we, were, and we confess and recognize that your church has not been praying, has not been declaring in us. So today we want to make a difference. We want to unite our hearts and de make a declaration. Father, we want us to speak up in the heavenly right now. Now Malaysia, Malaysia will be free from every force. Father, every force that comes against us that prevents us from fulfilling your purposes, in Jesus' name, we rebuke those forces. Amen. We release the wind of change on our nation. We release the power of the Spirit over your churches in Malaysia. We pray, we release that every church will rise up in the anointing of the Holy Spirit Amen. and go forth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we release the power of the Holy Spirit to touch lives in our congregation and our churches and that it will spill over spill over and Lord many will be drawn into the kingdom Amen. Amen. Lord we speak with some change over the majority race of our nation that do not know you we speak with some change Lord that many people's group will come into the kingdom of God Amen. and Father we thank you we do all this in faith and we declare this in the name of Jesus Christ our Amen. Lord Amen. So Lord, help us. Help us to continue to press in. In, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Albert. Alright, so let me just go into um, the, uh, I've got actually four points. Let me quickly, quickly run you through, okay? I, I won't read so many scriptures, is it okay? Are you familiar with uh, the book of Acts, right? Yes. Uh, Acts 1, 2, okay, la, la. okay. So never mind. Let me just start with um, the, the wind of change are pictures and purposes of the wind of the Holy Spirit in scriptures. Okay, I've just nearly quoted four. Um, sure, there are many more. All right. So the first one is Ezekiel 37, where he talks about um, the, where he gives us a picture of the dry bones being brought back to life. All right. Um, so um, the thing is this. Yeah, the sad thing is that a church can actually be full of dry bones. 
okay, meaning that uh, they are full of church attendees who are religious but has like very superficial or no relationship at all with our Lord Jesus, lah. All right, and uh, they are in need of the bread of God, the wind of God. All right, and uh, in this verse, uh, God after that says that I will put my spirit on you, in you, and you will live. So in Ezekiel 37, it is the, the wind of change here is the wind of revival. Okay, bring something that is dead back to life. Okay, the second type of wind of change is actually the wind of regeneration. Yeah? If you look at John 3, 7, 8, let me talk to you. This is the account of uh, Jesus talking to Nicodemus about being born again. Uh, huh? So he said, do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wishes and you will hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So it's everyone who is born of the Spirit. Yeah? So the wind here illustrates the mysterious operation of the spirit in, in, uh, in affecting new birth. Yeah? So when you pray about the wind of change, it is with this understanding that the wind will bring salvation. Yeah? Okay, so this is actually by Harrison uh, interpreting X uh, page 58. Yeah? So the other type of um, wind of change that when the Holy Spirit comes is that it is he, he will bring about this wind of judgment, as you can see in Luke 3. Uh, 16 to 17. Um, let me read it. John answered, John the Baptist answered and said to all, I indeed baptize you with, you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to lose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out the threshing, his threshing floor and gather the wheat in his barn. But the chaff he will burn in with unquenchable fire. So John the Baptist. Uh, prophesied that there is one who would come after him, who is Jesus, uh, who baptizes in the Holy Spirit and the fire. By implication, uh, by implication, the wind would blow the chaff away. Chaff away. Uh, this is a, this is symbolic of judgment. All right, judgment. Uh. Similarly, the symbol fire here in this verse also alludes to the judgment of God and, and has the purpose of burning up. Uh, the shaft, okay? So both these elements point to the coming of the gospel and the spirit um, that would mean life for some and also judgment for others. Yeah. So um, this is the nature of the wind of God yeah, in scripture. Now why is it that uh, we want to uh, look at this point, uh, this topic of wind of change? Number two, uh, the pertinence of the wind of change. That is the importance of this wind of God. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I I say it in, um, in our local context. Number one, it is actually a prophetic word over Malaysia, yeah, especially. Amen. 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 Us. Ah, us. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a question, catch question. Okay. So, um, there are many, many words. I'm sure you've heard of it. Yeah? People dreaming of the sea, the turtle island, that, that kind of thing. Okay, yeah. So, uh, God wants to send revival la, into our land. Uh, number two, I think our churches in Malaysia, like our pastor Craig, uh, it's revival. We need the wind of God. Uh, the future is uncertain uh, without God. Okay. Uh, a prophetic voice once said that the only hope for Malaysia uh, is revival. It's either revival or persecution. Okay. So sorry, yeah, it's a bit sombering. Yeah, but it's a fact. It could lead down that road. Okay? And uh, there's a price to be paid for both uh, revival and persecution. So uh, may the Lord help us to choose wisely. Okay. Yeah. Let's choose wisely. Okay. And we, we will come to how uh, we need to prepare uh, okay, for the way of persecution. So the other third thing is that um, why is this so important? Because of the urgency of the times that we're living in. We're in the last days. Uh, number one, the church needs to cultivate an intimate relationship with the Lord and to complete His will. And that can only happen if we have the Holy Spirit feeding us again and again. Not just one time experience, the continuous infilling of the Holy Spirit. Number two, the wind needs to come because the wind will empower the church to be effective witnesses okay that would bring masses to Christ okay why do I say that because in the book of Acts uh, Peter's first sermon after the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, actually brought like 3,000 people to Christ okay uh, 
we all lie. Sometimes we mess up. Uh, so hard, no one to reach one or so. <laughs> Climb the mountain, swim the sea. Then uh, ask them what to receive or not, also cannot. See, but with the power of the Holy Spirit, every, everything becomes exponential. The little things that we do. We just, we just say a single word and things begin to happen. I had this encounter. Um, you all know that I you all know that I'm actually a music teacher. Okay, uh, so actually I had one of my classes uh, over Zoom and um, it was a group class and I, I wanted to I felt very guilty because I, I didn't give this particular student enough time. So I said, hey, uh, X, okay, X, uh, can you please uh, stay back after the Zoom and let me talk to you. So uh, even in my weakness, the Lord actually used me. So I met her one to one, yeah, and I said, I just nearly said, how are you? She began crying already. You see, I, this, this is the work of the Holy Spirit, you see. In her mind, she says that she said that she was actually thinking about suicide. You see, so the Lord loves her so much, yeah? and the Lord sort of escaped this this thing, my seemingly weakness, you know, and uh, sin. So you know, because I didn't give her enough time, uh, so I wanted to tell her sorry. I'll give you time. You see, so and the Lord began to minister to her. She was overwhelmed with um, the spirit of God, uh, because she's not a believer, uh, by the way. Okay. And the Spirit of God can still touch an unbeliever. So now she's in contact with a female pastor in my church and uh, on the way to salvation. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so we, we need a lot of all this kind of movement of the Holy Spirit. Because when, when God does something in His way, then it becomes very permanent. Huh? Right? But sometimes, uh, like I told you, you know, push, 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 so okay, nah. You talk until it comes, come, 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 so it won't, it won't, it won't happen. So we need the power of God. Yeah? Uh, there's a verse, uh, there's a, a quote by Corey Campbell uh, that says that trying to do the Lord's work, including witnessing, yeah, in, our own, in your own strength, is the most confusing, exhausting, and tedious of all work. But when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, then the ministry of Jesus just flows out. So actually today, uh, I want to encourage this church. Press the book. You know, with the remaining time that we have, all right, uh, here uh, on earth, make it come from the Lord. Bring the souls into the kitchen. Okay, the there is an opportunity now, really. You know, the opportunity is open. Preach the word all season, in and out of season. When you feel like doing it, when you don't feel like doing it, just do it. Bring as many as possible to the kingdom of God. Alright? So, um, so today I would like us to look into the coming of the Holy Spirit uh, in X 1-2. This is actually basically a Pentecost message. Uh, okay? Yeah? So uh, I'm going to paraphrase the coming of the Holy Spirit, the baptism, uh, as the wind of change. Uh, okay? Yeah? So in X 2, the wind of change is the wind of empowerment. Yeah? And revival that bring that brings us power for witness, uh, okay. And when His power comes upon us uh, and we witness, uh, you can be sure that we will see not just one or two coming to know the Lord. We will see a lot of people. Yeah, uh, yeah. Seen like God using me to touch one, and then God at the same time touch the whole family. You know. So this is what uh, we are capable of in the Lord Jesus Christ and find the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. So let's just read a couple of scriptures just for to refresh this. Acts 1, 4 to 8. It says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You shall have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall baptize with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel. He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, my uh, witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Yeah? So I want to comment on verse 4 a bit. It says that these were the last words, uh, these were the last words of Jesus to his disciples after his resurrection, but then before his ascension. The disciples were told to wait 
in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit, so that they will be filled with His power. Yeah? And the fulfillment of this promise is recorded in Acts 2, 1, 4, when the day of Pentecost had fully come. Okay, background. Huh? So the other background that I want us to know is this, yeah, verse 8. Okay, verse 8 says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. So this is really the Great Commission recorded in the book of Acts. Yeah, we know the Great Commission, right? Matthew 1, right? Uh, uh, but this is the one in the book of Acts. Yeah? So, uh, so we are to be witnesses after receiving the wind of God. Yeah, the infilling of the Spirit. The endowment of power cannot be just for our own personal revival, right? Okay? Or contained within the four walls of the church. Yeah, the wind, the infilling of the power of God, the infilling of the Spirit of God, they are for a greater purpose. And that is actually world evangelism. From where we are to the ends of the earth. Yeah? After that, when we are empowered, we are to go. Alright? I don't know about you, yeah. Many times in the past when I was younger, I keep wanting God to fill me. You know? Oh God fill me with the spirit, you know, and being a good father. He does that all the time. Alright? And I remember one day when I was sitting down in prayer and then I heard the father God of tell me, Spirit of God said, I want you to go and evangelize your grandfather. <laughs> you know, like, how to go and evangelize my grandfather, you know, like he's like from China, you know. And my father became a Christian already, like, you know, it's like so difficult. Someone now you ask the grandson to go and preach the gospel. <laughs> yeah, but that was a challenge, uh, that the spirit of the day. So, um, what I'm saying is that many times we can, we can have a good time, but when it comes to like, when we see that there's a need, uh, there's a, a, an open door to afford an opportunity to witness, we shrink back because we are fearful. Alright, I'm telling you right now, because I am also still fearful today, you know, because I know that maybe there are some people that God would want me to preach the word, but I, I don't have the courage to, to, to you know, to say it. Because sometimes with relatives, it's quite difficult. Alright? But, uh, but may the Lord help me. <laughs> and help all of us. Okay? Relatives are the most difficult, right? Yeah, but they are the closest to us. We are in contact for the most. Yeah? So, uh, God is patient, but I think we have to do our work. Right? Is patient that none should perish. Yeah. So, um, so this X two one four, right? It says, uh, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a ru- rushing mighty wind. Okay, rushing mighty wind. Okay, and it filled the whole house while they were sitting. Then appeared to them divine tongues of fire, and one sat upon each other, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. And the Spirit gave them a chance. Okay, there are a few things I just want to point out from this scripture. Number one, the wind of the Holy Spirit comes at an appointed time. We cannot dictate when God wants to come. Our job is to wait for Him because He is the Lord. Yeah? We cannot say, God, I paid the price of none this, none this. Now, come. He is God. But I tell you the truth. Knowing the Father in my walk with Him. You know the Father is so, so, so good. Every time I take and make an effort to prepare myself, He will come at me. So if you have a desire to seek the Lord, that's very, very precious. Amen. Seriously. That, that is the grace of God working in our lives. Don't take it for granted. Yeah? When you feel the Spirit of God tugging you to spend time, tugging you to pray, tugging you to worship, tugging you to work, read the Word of God, don't, 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 don't shut him out. Okay? He, he's drawn. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah? So, uh, yield to him. Okay? So there's an appointed time. He longs to visit us. I want to tell you this today. Okay? Um, and I want to make this declaration that we are actually in a season of outpouring and the wind of God is coming. Okay? Uh, wait for it. Okay? Wait for the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Yeah? Number two, the Spirit of God comes suddenly when we least expect. Okay? After I'll share, you, share with you a story. Huh? He comes suddenly. Huh? Okay? And of course, the wind of God comes with some sort of accompanying signs huh? and manifestation. Right? For them, it was a sound from heaven and then there were visible signs of tongues of fire. 
Yeah. Um, in our case today, I rarely see tongues of fire. La. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I do hear sounds. Uh. Okay. And what kind of sound do I hear? Uh? Uh, I hear speaking of the tongues, you know, prophesying or speaking the word of God only or praising God. These are all expressions of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh. Alright? As in Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, it tells us, be filled with the Spirit, do not be drunk with wine. Alright? Then speak to one another, another with some things and spiritual song. It is all in the same uh, uh, passage. So, um, being filled with the Spirit, yeah, sometimes uh, we will have a lot of songs in our hearts to the Lord. Alright? So, um, it is also a picture of uh, exuberant worship and intimate relationship with the Lord. When the Spirit of God comes, He, he helps us to be intimate with the Lord. Yeah? Okay. Um, I just, just want to say something about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is easily grieved and uh, easily quenched. Yeah? Right? Yeah? Um, someone once said, uh, when the Holy Spirit comes, uh, He comes with a sound. Uh, but when he leaves, uh, he leaves quietly. <laughs> okay, and that's very scary. Uh. Alright, so even up, uh, every now and then, I uh, just like, you know, I'm gonna check myself. How come I'm gone? You know, not that. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we are all safe by grace. Right? Okay? The Holy Spirit is living in us. But the question is whether He is preeminent in our lives, uh, Alright, when we know that He's living in us. Yeah, I think that's very, very important. Uh. Okay, and then C, the will of change is for all. Okay, uh, I always encourage my church to you know, because we are Baptists, uh, sometimes we don't go so much into the things of the Spirit, you know, and then they like, <laughs> we think like, oh God, God can visit man, <laughs> right? Yeah, and then some more, quite a lot of seniors in my church. Uh, yeah, so I want to encourage all of you, just as I encourage them, you know, that the will of God in Acts, 2 verse 16 is actually for every generation. Alright, so you may think that your time is over, which I actually sense quite a bit today. Like, <laughs> some of you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I feel that some of you already say, ah, come on. Come on, yeah. <laughs> it's not over here. Yes. There's another season to yes. know. Oh, I'm serious. I'm serious. Don't stop praying there. If you want to see the, the, the will of God coming to your family, your prayers matter to God. Yeah? Uh, it is not confined to one generation as some people would make us think. Like. Some people say that, wow, the young was the rise. Huh? Then what, uh, what about the old? Sleep up. Actually, this is to untap force of the army of God. Because of our mentality. We think old ah, ah we took Uku ah. Tansai Kai. But Tansai Kai also can 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 pray, right? Yes. Ah? Correct, no? Ah? Tansai Kai also can witness, right? Ah? Make your holiday meaningful. Ah. Yeah. Okay. I've got encounters when I go overseas, you know, like out of blue, I will prophesy to this particular person and then he will he will experience encounters, that kind of thing. Alright, so uh, the, the Spirit of God can, can do this kind of thing. Because once you are filled with the Spirit of God, you, you carry the presence of God everywhere you go. You release the presence. You see the things you need to happen. Alright, God wants to use all of you. Okay, this is the message that I have in my heart. Yeah, it doesn't matter how old you are. God can still use you. Still wants to use you. Still wants to bless you with His infilling. Still wants to breathe His breath on you. You are still the beloved of the Lord. You have not been sidelined. You are still under His gaze. He wants to use you and you can still make a difference for Him. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? So, don't throw your towel. Yeah, <laughs> okay? Make that change. Okay, I don't have much time. For another 15 minutes, right? Another half an hour. <laughs> okay. So what is important actually is the preparation for the reign of the Holy Spirit. Uh. Okay. So I want to just go through a few points. Uh, I was focused on a few points, but um, maybe this one what will be Hong Kong. Uh. <laughs> Say less. Uh. <laughs> okay, but I want to focus on the first few. Uh, obedience uh, very important. Uh. So Acts 1.12 it says, then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of 
Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. Now, you must understand that the disciples obeyed Jesus' command to wait in Jerusalem when they returned to Jerusalem after witnessing Jesus' ascends, ascension to Mount Olivet, today's Mount Olives. Yeah? Now, the disciples would have missed the endurance of power had they gone on their own way to pursue their own agenda. Right? They are people of Galilee, you know. They should go back to Galilee, man. The Aicho Kang, man. The Aichia, man. Right, man. Ah, the Aichi Mokya, man. All right. Sorry. <laughs> I'm speaking in tongues. <laughs> you know, they have to feed their family by going, you know. Galilee is uh, is where they're from. All right. Um, and go back to their own normal lives, but they chose to obey the Lord's instruction despite the inconveniences. Okay. About 3 of them were present when Jesus gave the command to tarry in Jerusalem, but only 120 plus way on. What about the 380 plus? Where are they? Obedience will normally inconvenience us. Uh, okay? uh, a price to pay, but obedience prepares us for the infilling of the Spirit of God and for the will of God and His power. Obedience actually positions us to receive God's blessing. This is a very easy uh, uh, principle. Yeah, it's a very important principle. Um, I want to share with you uh, a story, yeah, uh, a testimony, which I'm very, very excited. All right, now I'm a music teacher. Okay, now I I'm also the the state representative for Trinity College London in the All right, so uh, as a music teacher, I like my profile to look good, Anna. Okay. And every time I my profile, you see all the nice things. Uh. But there's something that I do that I don't tell people. But today I tell you all. Uh, <laughs> I actually teach kids in the kindergarten once a week to sing songs. Okay. All right. So I, I I go there because I tell people because they pay me a very permanent income. <laughs> so I go uh. Okay. Uh, but I really love the kids. I. I teach them how to sing uh, gospel songs, etc. So, uh, after a long time teaching at the kindergarten, I, I remember one day, you know, when I was talking to my pastor, you know, I expressed my, I said, you know, you don't know how difficult it is, you know, for me in my heart, you know, to teach uh, younger kids and things like this. It doesn't look on, it doesn't look good on the CD, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I just left it there, like, but you know, the Lord now nah, hears every word that we speak. Yeah. So one day, and, and, and I, 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 I have this, okay, one of the passions I have in, in life, though inconsistent, is the, uh, the passion to see the move of the Holy Spirit. Okay, I get really very excited when I see the Spirit of God moving upon people. Okay, uh, and uh, what happened was one day in the kindergarten, they had an evangelistic kind of thing for the kids. Huh? So as an elder of the church, I felt very low that day, you know, and uh, the teacher said, hey, elders, ma elder must pray. Pray lah! So, you okay, know, just say a prayer, you know. God opened the heavens, la, 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 you know, the normal thing. They did the whole evangelistic thing and then it was done. And then uh, they asked, they said that, uh, if you, if the kids, uh, they tell them, if you want to receive Christ, just, uh, they, they, they paraphrase it this way, la, uh, receive the love of Christ. Which of, who of you wants to receive the love of Christ? La? So uh, that, 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 that was the way we went to. Alright, so everything finished. So I have like one final glass, huh? All right, about the dean of them. Um, the, pres the principal actually told me, just forget about the class, huh? you know. Uh, in normal circumstances, I would have said I would let it go. You know, I, I wouldn't want to teach. Very tiring of teaching kids. I have to sing, I have to jump. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, that day for some reason I said, "Ah, yeah, never mind lah." You know, like very big hearted. You know, I said, "Ah, yeah, one more class again. Ah, let's just do it lah." Okay. So the class came in. So we just sang, "Oh, say Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong." Then I felt God was telling me, "I." Uh, it's like he was pointing that something was happening amongst the kids, you see. The, I, I felt that the kids were experiencing something. So I asked, oh, what do you all sense? So they couldn't articulate. I said, do you all sense something like the love of God? 
and our knees. And then so many of them that come put up their, their hands, you know. So I knew already at that time something was happening in the realm. Uh, and uh, as they sang, there was this six-year-old guy. He lifted, I said, lift up your hands to worship, you know, to sing. And when everybody put down their hands, he was still lifting up his hands. His eyes were closed. And then the kids highlighted to the teachers, teacher, he is crying. Six-year-old kid. The Spirit of God visited. You must understand, that is very precious for me. So many years in the kindergarten, I felt so down. In one moment, that, that those years that I felt very shameful vanished because he came for 25 minutes, the, the guy was weeping, hands lifted, closed his eyes. We told the class dismissed. He was there together with me and another teacher. The Spirit God ministered to him. I tell you, the atmosphere was like holy. You know and you know that the Spirit of God is there. I've never quite experienced something like that in my ministry and in my life. God wanted to encourage me. Even when I felt that nothing was happening, suddenly He came. That's why I say don't trust the feeling. Trust the leading of the God of God. Okay, after that, the fantastic thing is this. We asked him what happened. This is from a kid, huh? No manipulation at all, yeah? If they doubt our, our question, uh, you know, like, can be emotionally, uh, what do you call that, affected, you know, isn't it? It's good to be a, a person's emotion, you know. But this one is, for me, is purely the spirit of God. This got the entire kindergarten teachers to be so excited. They wanted to preach the gospel to their classes. <laughs> you know, there was a sense of excitement. So, so what, what did this this person say to us, actually Jesus visited that day. There was a manifested presence of Jesus that he could see, but I couldn't, but we could felt. He described Jesus, Jesus came to touch his heart, you know, and uh, he has uh, problems, uh, he has got no, his parents are always away, he's being brought up by the grandmother. So Jesus came to heal his heart so that his void is being filled by the presence of God. So that he will not turn to wicked ways when he is with God. So that's so important, you know. Your grandson, daughters, pray for them to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God so that they won't be mischievous and the of God. Even if they run away, the mark of God is already embedded. Pray for your children. It's very, very important. We have a work to do. Yeah? Pray for them every day. Yeah? My grandmother used to pray for me every day. My dad and my mom, they pray for me every day. Okay. Uh, yeah. So part of being obedient, glory to God. Uh, we just give for uh, And when I share this with you, it's because number one, I want to tell you that the spirit of revival is already in our midst. Amen. You just need to know what the Spirit of God wants us to do. Wait on Him, He will come. Alright? Uh, Acts 2 30, 8 39 says, Part of being obedient is to repent. Alright? So uh, then Peter said to them, Repent. Let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise to you and your children, and all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Repentance is a prerequisite uh, to receiving the Holy Spirit according to this verse. Uh, something that, uh, is, since it's a gift, uh, therefore, repentance is no need. <laughs> Not true. Uh, it says so, uh, so uh, Acts 2, 38 makes it clear that repentance positions us to receive the, the wind of God. Uh. Okay, yeah. So the other second point is uh, oneness. Uh. Okay, I think I can finish. Yeah, so I'm going to ask you to remember this word. Can you say how do you spell oops? Ah? O O P X. Right? So very easy. Yeah. This this O O P X. Ah, 
the front uh, for BTS access wireless uh, one uh, so uh, I'm, I'm sure you all know what uh, Psalm 133 says but behold how good and how blessed it is for brethren to dwell together in unity and for them God commanded the blessing life forevermore life forevermore is revival is life revival brings life okay now Acts 1 the deed, it says that and they entered the disciples and they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Yeah? They were staying in the upper room. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, Zealots, Simon, and then Judas, the son of James. Now, they were all staying in the same place. Okay? So there has got to be a lot of love, give and take, a lot of humility to stay in the same place, right? Okay, have you all been to church camp? Nah? <laughs> they were okay, nah. I mean, one day, two days, right? Oh, this one, nah, in Chaitan, you know? You know, when short-term stay is fun, together, yeah? Long-term stay together is fire. You know, all our weaknesses, you know, will show up. When we gather together, you know, we will burn each other with our different personalities, preferences, and pride, yeah? Uh, communal living can be a challenge. Huh? Yeah. Uh, and it takes a lot of grace and preferring one another to stay together. Uh, for the married, too, is challenging enough, right? Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. How many of them are staying together in the same place? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. But um, they, you know, staying in the, together in the same place, having a united heart and spirit is totally different, a different level of requirement. Huh? Okay, there was also probably a lot of forgiving to do for crossing of boundaries and a lot of uh, intentional loving to do for the difficult ones. I'm sure there are no difficult ones here. Huh? <laughs> everybody loves everybody, right? <laughs> I don't know, lah, but my church got I can not rap many times. Huh? But yet, you know, in, 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 in uh, becoming one in the Lord, I think forgiveness is essential. I don't want to talk too much. I think you all know what it means. Okay. Uh, so, uh, but I want to read to us Matthew 5, 43, 48. It says that, You have heard that it was said that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemy, bless those who curse you, do not do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even tax collectors do so. Therefore you shall be perfect, as your Father in heaven is perfect. Perfection here has to do with loving our enemies. That one can, I feel sometimes we can do that. Sometimes the difficult one uh, is uh, when your brother is your own enemy. <laughs> so I, 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 I looked up uh, this term. Do uh, you know what this term called in English? It's called portmanteau. Uh. It is basically uh, referred to words that are created with a combination of the beginning of a word and the ending of another. Like for example, for example, frenemies. Uh. <laughs> Friend plus Enemies, then you get frenemies. Ah, look out. This one, ah, very difficult. People that you trust, they stab you on the back. You know what I'm saying? And yet the command of the Lord, he says, for people, love for. Wow. Look to a guy, oh. Very difficult. Huh? You know? We need the grace of God. And if you don't do that, it's also difficult because then we cannot, we cannot move forward, you see. Alright? Maybe some of us cannot move forward but because we have this issue. Uh, you believe today God wants you to deal with it. Uh, just bring it before the Lord. Alright? Uh, it starts with a change of mind. A lot of people, repentance, right? Repentance is metanoia, it's a change of mind. It doesn't start with your feeling. Uh. If you want to start with forgiving somebody, it starts with the mind, the mind, and then God will bring the grace. Okay, I like what uh, Corinne says. He says that she says that forgiveness is an act of 
will. And the will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. Ah, that means even if you feel hurt, ah, you can still forgive. Ah. Ah, so forgiveness is a choice we make to let the person who has hurt us off the hook. Yeah, forgiveness is a gift that we give to the offender. Okay. But why is it so difficult to forgive? Okay, the scripture in Luke 7 47 says, Therefore I hear you say, uh, so I say to you, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Okay. So I think one of the ways in which uh, so the reason why we fail to love and forgive is because we have not seen and know how much we have been loved and forgiven by Allah. Okay? So if you struggle among in this area, I would want to encourage you. Meditate on the love of God. Know how much you have been forgiven. Then God will begin to do it. Okay? Alright. Next one, prayer. Very right? quickly, yeah. Yeah, that one I need to say. <laughs> I cut that. Prayer, yeah. So um, X14 says this all continue in one accord in prayer and supplication and uh, with the with, with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, with his, with his brothers. Uh, and then X2 also says the day of Pentecost had fully come, they are all in one accord in one place. So there are two things here that I want to highlight concerning prayer in the upper room. Number one, that is united prayer. United prayer is very, very important. Okay? If you want to win, you can demons be there. Okay? It would be impossible for the 120 disciples in the upper room to continue in one accord in prayer and supplication unless there is first oneness in mind and heart in their relationships with one another. Do you get me? The forgiving everything, alright? Uh, and then coming together to pray. Okay? So uh, this one accord prayer resonates in Jesus' command. He says, and again I say to you, if two or three agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Right? So number two, the second type of prayer, according to this verse, is actually persistent prayer. United prayer, persistent prayer. Okay, we have to pray persistently. We have to pray until something happens. You all know the active acronym, right? E-U-S-H, right? Push. Yeah? So many of us, we want very quick answers. Huh? <laughs> okay? So when we don't see answers, we give up praying. All right? Persistent prayer requires tenacity to keep praying until prayers are answered. Jesus says that we should always pray and not, not what? Not give up. We should pray always. Okay? Even though the promise of the Father was to send the Spirit to endure them with power, I believe they still have to pray for the will of God to be done. All right? So when a promise is given, we still have to pray for it to come to us. Okay? We cannot say we receive a prophetic word and then, oh, just leave it to be. No, we pray until it comes to us. God is not reluctant to answer our prayers, but our prayers makes us ready for His answers. Yeah? Uh, as we continue to insulate our lives with prayer, we are tuned, we are tuned to His heartbeat and will for our lives. Yeah? So this is the type of prayers. United prayer, persistent prayer will prepare us for the wind and the infilling of the Spirit. Yeah? Uh, very important because uh, Andrew Matthew says that the spiritual history of a mission or a church is written in its <coughs> prayer life. Okay? And the third thing, the fourth thing that we need to do is that we need to have knowledge of the scripture. I wouldn't want to read it already. Okay? Uh, if you look at Acts uh, 1, uh, they are, you know, like uh, Peter quoted from Psalms and etc. So I'll just make this statement that Peter actually had knowledge of scriptures regarding uh, Judas's betrayal and his apostleship being replaced by another. All right? Peter's sermon that brought about the 3,000 souls in Exodus quoted the prophet Joel and David Psalms. Yeah? Knowledge of scriptures uh, are essential in the preparation for the coming of the Holy Spirit, the will of God. Yeah? So uh, Peter knew that new scriptures and that, and they prepared him to be an effective leader and uh, to lead the people like and preach and 2 Timothy says that all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God so that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Yeah? So it's important that we know the word yeah? so that when, when the souls come in, we can read them. Yeah? And also, um, uh, the scripture also helps us to guard against the excesses of the flesh you know, in the move of God. 
Yeah, you, I'm sure you've heard that you know there are excesses right in the revival, you know, and all things will come in like a mixture of the flesh and etc. So if we know the word of God, then we are able to discern uh, the spirit, we are able to discern what is of God and what is not of God. Because when the spirit of God moves, the enemy also wants to move. So we have to be very careful. Yeah, Hebrews 4 says that. Uh, for God says that the, the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit, of the joints and marrows, and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Alright? Uh, this is important. Alright? Uh, and lastly, spiritual leadership. Um, since the death of Judas Iscariot, there were only, how many disciples left? 11. Yeah? As prophesied in the scripture, this particular disciple would be replaced. Yeah? With the knowledge of Old Testament, uh, Peter then proposed two persons. Yeah? This is Justice, is it? And we pronounce it Justice and Matthias. Yeah? So uh, the, lost one, the Lord was cast and he fell upon Matthias to complete the position of the 12 uh, apostles. Yeah? Um, without going deep into biblical numerology, the number 12 actually is reflective of what? You all know that? Uh, the 12 is reflective of what? Number 12. It's a uh, completion of uh, power, government, and the coming of God's kingdom. Right? So, uh, I wouldn't want to go into that, right? I, I, I don't have expertise in that. I'm uh, just making a statement on the figure 12. Okay? But my personal interpretation is this, that before revival comes, before the will of God comes, uh, the spiritual leadership of a particular place or person or church has to be in order. Yeah? And uh, the spiritual leadership, uh, the leaders, the, there's God's leadership structure must be in place. All right? Otherwise, uh, the people can get into confusion. They don't know who to turn to, that kind of thing. All right? So there must be proper, proper guidance, sound teaching, etc. Okay? So um, all these factors, yeah? obedience, oneness, prayer, scripture, spiritual leadership in order, uh, prepare the disciples for the will of the Holy Spirit and His power. Okay, so I'm coming to the end already. <laughs> <laughs> Conclusion. In summary, the will of God and one brings us into a deeper walk with God. Yeah? It is the two. It empowers us to witness. Okay, for witness and also for the work of the Lord. And number three, the will of God will bring exponential growth to the churches. Yeah? And uh, this is the statement I heard in my heart as I was preparing for this, which I've mentioned, that the will of God will come. Wait for it. Yeah. Okay, let's just close in prayer. <laughs> Father God, I just want to thank you for uh, your word. God, I, 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 I just know that you are coming. Lord, may you just Cause us to be ready for your coming. Help us to, to prepare ourselves, O oh God, for your will to blow on us. God, because we know that this wind of your spirit, the infilling of your spirit is so powerful, O oh God, that it will cause us to be so much more effective for your work and for witnessing, O oh God. So God, we we want you, God, we want the wind of the spirit. We want to be, we want to have intimate relationship with you. We want to be ready for your coming, God. So may you prepare us, may you do all that we need to do so that we will receive the infilling of your Holy Spirit. We just want to commit this to you. And we, uh, I bless this church, Lord God. I, I pray for your blessings to be at one stop shakers. Every one of the members here, Lord, I ask that you will grant them a breakthroughs, Lord God. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus where there is a sense of condemnation in their hearts and mind. Lord, that the wind of your Spirit will blow them away in Jesus' name. I want you to do me, do, me, do something. I want you to uh, declare the wind of change over whatever that is burdening you right now. Okay, if you have something that you cannot get over or you're struggling with, you begin to say, ask God for the wind of change to come into your situation in the name of Jesus. Just ask the wind of God to, ask God to blow His wind upon your situation and cause there to be a change. I've seen this, uh, people have told me, uh, one person has told me that as she declared it, situations began to change. 
All right. Uh, let's by faith do it. Yeah. Let's by faith do it. Take a minute. Take a minute. So the Lord of 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 the Lord so, Father God, release that wind in the name of Jesus, oh God. In the name of Jesus. So let's just sing the chorus one last time, and then we'll end. Okay? Continue to pray.